G'day, how's it going? I'm Jamie. So, I like the Game Boy Advance, and I like programming in C. So, I thought, why not put that together and turn it into a bit of a video series on how to program in C for the Game Boy Advance. Now, we're going to be using a couple of tools to get this done. Uh, we're going to be using DevKit Pro. We're going to need a pretty good emulator, so let's use MGBA. And it's already got GDB debugging hooked up into it. And let's use Visual Studio Code to tie things together. So to start with, I've got a basic project that I've put up on GitHub and let's run through how to get set up and running with this project. Okay, so I'll put a link to the GitHub in the description of the video. But that'll take you to this page here um, and just clone or download this repo. Okay, this is a really basic project just to get set up and running and to display some fancy colors on the screen. So what we'll need first though, um, grab a copy of MGBA. There's a link here in the dependencies. Okay, DevKit Pro, there's an installer there. Follow that link, install it. Now, I've installed mine to the root of my C drive because uh, I use it a lot. And I like short file paths as well. And DevKit Pro seems to as well, especially when you go through make files. Um, now, this make file on this project, you might need to modify it. There's a make file here that comes with the project. You may need to modify the first two lines here to reflect where DevKit Pro and DevKit Arm are actually installed to. Mine is just C, DevKit Pro. Yours could be D drive, E drive, my documents, etc. With make files, do install this to somewhere that doesn't have any spaces in the path name. So if it is in the my documents folder, move it somewhere else so you don't have that space between my and documents. Um, the other thing to do that DevKit Pro doesn't seem to currently do is to set up a couple of environment variables. Okay, I've got one for DevKit Arm. It's got the path to where DevKit Arm lives. I've got one for DevKit Pro and it's to the root of the DevKit Pro installation directory. Set those two up because um, they're quite important and may come in handy uh, when we're referencing code, etc., and looking for include paths. Um, you'll need to download and install Visual Studio Code. It's pretty straightforward to get this thing downloaded and installed. Once it's installed, to make life a little bit easier, grab the following extensions. There's an ARM syntax um, for assembly, even though we won't be writing too much assembly uh, for this series, we'll be writing a lot of C code. It's still nice to have this here. You'll need the C++ and C package for DevKit Pro and C++ IntelliSense as well, which is quite nice. Right, once you get to that stage and you've got Visual Studio Code installed, you've got DevKit Pro installed, and you've got your MGBA installed, you can open everything up in Visual Studio Code. Now all I've done is just file open uh, folder and navigate to the folder that this is in. So I've got my images, include, source files, etc. You'll also have this VS Code folder. So what I've done is I've defined some of the JSON arguments for like CPP properties. This is gonna tell us where our include path is for certain things. So we're gonna be looking in uh, workspace folder. We're gonna be looking for Visual Studio around here if we've got it. Uh, we're gonna have a few other things we might look at. We're gonna look in our include directory locally as well. And we're also gonna look in the ARM non avi include directory too. Got some defines in for just general purpose, debug, unicode, etc. So it's all pretty standard stuff just this little bit here telling us where to find our includes, additional includes anyway. Um, I've got a modified launch. Um, so if we press F5 to launch, it's gonna try and do this. Uh, we're gonna launch, we're gonna call it uh, GDB debug. It's got a timeout. Um, okay, and we're just saying, okay, the program we're gonna fire up is the one in this workspace and it's called basic.elf. Okay, so this folder should have been called basic. Um, when you download it from GitHub, etc., you should do that. Put it in the folder because we use the folder name in the make file when generating the uh, GBA and the .elf files. Um, so we're gonna look for basic.elf to run through the debugger. It's gonna be in GDB mode. Um, target architecture is um, this local host here. Um, this is set up for MGBA. MGBA looks for GDB connections on this port number. Um, there's a path to where me debugger uh, lives for GCC. It's just here. Um, 
so that's wherever you installed your DevKit Pro directory to. So it might need to change from C DevKit Pro to wherever your DevKit Pro installation was. Um, and then, yep, yeah, the file we're going to load in is this one, DGBA basic. Okay, so I've installed the repo that I've pulled down from GitHub of the basic one into GitHub GBA basic, etc. If you've pulled it down and installed it somewhere else, change this, okay? Um, make sure it's hopefully in a basic folder because this basic ELF, the name of this file comes from the folder that it's in, right? And there's some simple tasks.json stuff as well. So uh, we've got stop emulation, which will find MGBA and kill it if it's still active. Um, there's, uh, we can make for debug, passing through a debug parameter of one or debug parameter of zero to make for release, similar sort of tasks. Uh, we can clean, which cleans everything up. And then we've got the GDB debug task as well. Okay, which tells it if we were emulating, stop it, make it if we have to, and then launch MGBA with a GBA file. And then the debugger will connect to it as well. So that's just the Visual Studio stuff out of the way. That should be pretty clean and tidy. The things that you might need to change here are like the path to where MGBA lives. Um, and I think on later versions of MGBA as well, the extension isn't just MGBA XE, it might have some version numbers on there as well. Um, there's also one in here for run, which is if you want to run it on no cache GBA, okay, which I've installed on my system to C drive no cache GBA. Um, now, when we're building this code, we're gonna use a make file to build everything. So in the make file, make sure devkit pro and devkit arm are pointing to the correct locations for your drive. Okay, if you've installed it to D drive, change the C to a D. If you've installed it in E drive again, if you've installed it in like C GBA or D GBA, add in the GBA directory on make files forward slashes. It's the same as Linux um, for path names. So, yep, okay, so we're coming through. We've got devkit arm in our environment variable. That's cool. Um, we're looking for some GBA building rules as well in devkit arm. And we've got our target stuff set up. Okay, so we're going through for a build directory. We're gonna look for source files in folders called ASM source or resources. Uh, currently in this project, you've only got an include and a source folder. There's no resources or ASM folders, but we'll add those in later on. There's uh, include folders and resources. So we might have resources could potentially be where uh, images and binary files may live as well. Um, we're gonna include directory and data from there. This make file is an amalgamation of the make file that was put out by Tonklib and I think GBA lib as well also used this one too. So we're just setting up what architecture we're gonna use. Here's where I've put in uh, some checking for like if debug comes through with a value of one, then we're gonna build for debug. So we're gonna turn off any optimizations, turn on debugging symbols, and we'll get a very slow ROM built, okay? If we send it through without a debug value of one, we get all the optimizations turned on and we get a quite nice sort of separation between debug build and release build. So if we do build for release, you won't be able to use the debugger properly because any of the symbols, etc., will get stripped out by the optimizations that are turned on. Uh, then it's gonna go through and it's gonna find our C files, any other files we've got, any external libraries that we're looking for um, it's going to go through and build these all together. It's going to create some object files from our input C, CPP files, binary files, etc. It's going to link them all together and turn that into a GBA ROM. Now we've got a command to clean it as well, so it's going to clean anything up if these things exist. Okay, um, and target here is where the name comes from the folder. So whatever folder you've put this in, mine's in basic, it's going to build basic.elf, basic.gba, and basic.sav um, once it starts running in MGBA. If you rename the folder, then whatever gets built is going to rename, and you might have to rename some of those VS Code extensions for what you want to run. Um, then main is just this simple little file. I've got an IntelliSense file included. This is just some extra sort of hash to find, um, to find a few simple sort of things. But we just include it in here and then it would come straight into main. And we've got our main function. This is where the entry point for our program is. Uh, we're doing something really horrible, uh, setting this memory address location to this value. And then we're going through a while loop. Now, just pressing F5 on this should 
get it to compile and run. Um, now, the good thing with GBA programming is that the GBA is quite an old system these days, so it doesn't require too much processing power, which is why this should work quite well on quite low-end PCs and laptops. Um, right now, I'm currently building this on a Windows Surface from 2015, so it's getting a little bit old and it's running out of a lot of drive space. As you can see, it's built. We're running a debugger. We're linking to it, and hopefully, it should hit a breakpoint any time now. Okay, so we've hit a breakpoint right here. And we can see that, okay, we're writing something to a memory address. We're writing this value of 1027 to it. And we've got a value of T looked up locally here. And there's a few other things we can do. We can step over this and go through it line by line. We can now see a value for X. We can see a value for Y. And we can see that we're putting something into this memory. So we can step through effectively debugging this line by line. We can watch T increment as we go through it. And we can press play to continue. We can bring up MGBA. And we can see that we've got a program running which is just going through and coloring in the screen in a quite pleasant manner. And that's just the basic default program to get it up and running. So hopefully if you grab the uh, repo of GitHub, you should be able to get set up, get this far and get it to be, get it building. In the next video, I'll go through uh, exactly just cleaning this up, adding a few hash defines in, etc., making this code look a lot more readable than it is. And then getting started on creating a very simple static version of Pong and getting some simple bitmap data moving around the GBA screen. Uh, the benefit of this is if you do build this in release, you can put it into a uh, GBA and play it from the actual device itself if you've got one of those um, smart card readers, uh, which I highly recommend you do because there's nothing more fun than testing this stuff on actual hardware. Um, and that's it for the introductory video on how to get set up and running with this sort of GBA framework, I guess, in Visual Studio Code. Uh, if you have any issues with getting this set up and running, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try and guide you through what went wrong and I'll fix this up for future run-throughs so it's a little bit more smooth. Thank you.